Welcome to Lesson 2 in Inkscape. Lesson 2 in Inkscape is we are going to take a really strong look at manipulating objects in order to be more precise and more accurate. We manipulated objects yesterday. We changed its color, we changed the size of the stroke on the outside, we changed the color of the fill on the inside, we rotated, we moved, we scaled, we squished, we squashed. We did a whole bunch of manipulations yesterday on basic geometric shapes or primitives, but today we're going to do manipulations on objects in order to achieve a precise effect. Today we're going to build a Canadian flag as specifically precise as we possibly can. So fire up your software, bring Inkscape up. Again, just a quick reminder that your toolbox is over here on the left, your drop down menus are across the top. There is dialog boxes over here on the right that allow us to set certain factors specifically, and I'll get to those in future lessons. There's our color palette along the bottom, and our fill and stroke indicators down in the bottom left corner, which we can also use to affect the fill and the stroke. So let's just take a quick peek again, going back to our Create Rectangles and Squares tools. Left mouse click to engage, come over to the screen, left mouse click and drag and we get up a rectangle. Here is our Move uh, Select and Transform Objects tool. right? And if I take that object and I slide it over, you can see that it is actually a white square with a black stroke or outline. Now, it's sometimes hard to see that because the background in this entire software is white. But trust me, that's a white square. How do I know? Well, down here in the color palette offerings, you know you can change the color by simply right mouse clicking and setting the fill if the object is selected. Right mouse click set fill. But the very first option in the color palette is none. It's a white box with an X through it. That doesn't mean it's white in color. This one is the one that's white in color. This one means no fill, none chosen. So when you select an object and when you choose none or no fill, it is actually an empty transparent box. Your black stroke outline still is there, but there's nothing inside in the middle. So please realize we're dealing in a very white environment. Just know that no fill choice is different than white fill choice. Now notice if I go back to select this object again and I click in the middle, right? there's nothing there. I'm left mouse clicking and it's not selecting because there's nothing in the middle. There's no fill. I would have to select this object by clicking on the stroke or the outline. Then I can fill it back with white, left mouse click, and then I've got my white object. So if we're going to build something as specific as the flag of a country, then we need to make sure we're doing it very accurately because it's disrespectful to not do it accurately. So i got to find out what the size of a Canadian flag is. So I'm going to jump to the internet and I'm going to Google search what are the proportions of a Canadian flag? Because the size is somewhat irrelevant. We all know that flags come in different sizes, right? There's a great big one down at the foot of Olet Avenue and Riverside um, that stares across the, the Detroit River at uh, the United States, and it's huge. And we all know that we have medium-sized ones that we might have hanging in our home on Canada Day, July 1st, and you might even have teeny tiny ones on a stick that you wave back and forth when you go down for the fireworks. So the size of the flag is somewhat irrelevant. What are the proportions? And if I Google search that information and I go to Wikipedia, I will find out that the Canadian flag's proportions are essentially one to two. That means the flag is twice as long as it is tall. So it doesn't matter if it's three feet tall then it would be twice as wide, six feet wide. Or if it's six feet tall, then it would be 12 feet wide. The proportions are one to two, meaning it's twice as wide as it is tall. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to grab the rectangle I made. I'm going to move it off my printable page because I only want to drag things onto the printable page when I'm ready to print. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go up to my property bar. And I'm going to notice that in my property bar, I've got the ability to set my 
dimension to centimeters, millimeters, inches, pixels, points, pica, any of these. And I've already got a flag that's roughly, you know, six feet by four feet. Well, I'm just going to go with double the width, eight feet wide by four feet tall or high. Sorry, not feet, inches, my fault. Eight inches wide by four inches in height. And again, if I go to print this when I'm done, I can see that that's going to fit fine on my page. So I'm good with that. Twice as wide as it is tall. So I've got the basic outline of my Canadian flag. Well, we all know that the Canadian flag has a red stripe on the left side and a red stripe on the right side. Well, what are the proportions of that? So back to Wikipedia I go. And if I scroll down in Wikipedia, I get up this little icon at the bottom, construction sheet. And if I zoom in on that, I can see that of this overall flag, one quarter of the flag is the red stripe width. It is a ratio of one to two to the entire flag. So this red stripe on the left is one quarter the entire uh, width of the flag, but it's the same height. And the red stripe on this end is going to be one quarter the width and the entire height. And then the white in the middle is actually one half of the entire flag's width placed perfectly centered between the two red stripes. And then there is the emblem or the Canadian maple leaf in the center. All right, so I've got my basic understanding. I'm going to go back. I made myself a rectangle. And if I select it, I can see that it's eight inches wide by four inches tall. If I want to create another rectangle, select the rectangle drawing tool, click and drag any size you want. Go back to your select and transform objects tool. Well, if this one is eight wide by four tall, then the red stripe is going to have to be four tall as well. And is going to have to be one quarter of eight or two. Two wide by four tall. And there's your red stripe. Well, go ahead and color it red. Right mouse click, set fill. And there's your red stripe. And you should find that that red stripe is going to fit perfectly in the corner of your white background. And you may have even noticed that when you went to drag it in, Inkscape tries to help you match up the corners. Boom, corner to corner. Thank you, Inkscape. I appreciate it. There needs to be another red stripe on the far side. But there's no sense rebuilding it. Why rebuild another stripe when you can select this red stripe, you can right mouse click, and you can duplicate it. Now I have an exact copy of the first one that I can bring over and I can stick right in the corner of the right side. There we go. Drawing with accuracy, using the property bar to mani man manipulate my images to be exactly 8 inches wide by 4 inches tall, manipulate my stripes to be exactly 2 inches wide by 4 inches tall, leaving me a big white center portion that I now need to fill with a Canadian maple leaf. So back to the internet I go. I might as well jump back into Google. I might as well Google search Canadian Maple Leaf. And there'll be lots of options that come up, tons of options that come up, right? Choose the one you like best. But since we're making a flag, let's be fairly respectful and choose one that fits properly with the concept of what we're doing. Now, when we go to the internet, we've got thumbnail images and we've got higher resolution images over here in the black box. Never grab a thumbnail. Okay, never grab this image here. Let's go ahead and always grab the higher resolution image. I am going to just for one moment drop my software, my Inkscape, down out of the way because I want you to see something. I want you to see that this thumbnail, this one here, if I drag that and I drop it on my desktop, is not going to be better quality. Right? It's just a little download of a thumbnail. But if I select that thumbnail and I go find an actual Canadian flag, uh, Canadian maple leaf, and I drag it to my desktop, you're going to see that they look different. That's because this one 
the one that comes from the higher resolution is of higher quality. So I can close my internet or just drop it down because I don't need it anymore. Right, when I double click on this image and I bring it up, it is going to be a high quality Canadian maple leaf image. When I double click on this one, it's just a little thumbnail. And because it's graphic in nature, it looks okay, but it's actually tiny. And if I were to zoom in on this, we are not going to be happy with the quality of the image. It's blurry. Don't like it. So never select the thumbnail. Always go to the higher quality version that is over in the black box over here on the right side of your Google search. Now, if you bring something onto your desktop and you can see it in the little icon picture, then that means it will import into Inkscape. If I take that image now, if I drag it down and hover over my Inkscape software, Inkscape will come to life. I bring the image back up and I let go. I click OK. The image will be imported into Inkscape. Now, the image has come from the internet as a very big, high quality picture. So I need to resize. I need to drag it over. I need to stick it in the middle of my Canadian flag. I need to be careful not to skew it too much. And there we go. Canadian flag built. The last thing I would want to do with this image is I would want to group it all together. Because if I go to move the image or select the image, I'm only selecting or I'm only moving a single object. Well, that doesn't help me. I want the whole flag to come over. So, simply take your transform and select tool, click and drag and make a box around the object, right mouse click, and tell that object to group. Now you've got a Canadian flag that is all one piece that you could drag over and stick in the middle of your printable page and print it out if you wanted to. Certainly, don't forget that saving is an important part of any graphic design and you always want to be saving directly on your desktop. You never want to go searching for something and you always want to save something using your last name and then the name of the project. So Robinson Canadian flag, your last name, not mine, make it yours so that when you send it to me, I know it's your work and I can mark it. And there we go. Building something in Inkscape to a very specific standard. It's going to be what we focus on for the entire rest of grade 9 and build on for grade 10. All right. End of lesson number two. Come back for lesson number three and I will show you some more tricks in Inkscape.